Hi gang, here's the Star Trek's Enterprise being propelled with real-life ion propulsion, or ion wind. Here's how I made the modifications. You can see the holes in the front of the nacelles, and the cut-off back. I made a sort of T-shaped wire, making sure to use stranded wire, where each strand is an individual small wire with a sharp end. Notice that I've separated out the ends. I put the wire in the bottom hole. A little hot glue holds it in place. I do that for both nacelles. I then take a piece of aluminum foil and roll it up. I take another piece and put the rolled up piece in the middle. I fold it over. I then use a piece of dowel to form that into a cylinder. A small piece of aluminum tape holds it together. The result is an aluminum cylinder with one end well rounded. With the help of the dowel, I put it in the back of the nacelle with the rounded end on the inside. A little hot glue will help hold it in place. I made another T-shaped wire and taped one end to the aluminum that's sticking out. I do that for both nacelles. And now to prepare the test rig. I put the rotor in place. It turns easily. I used some black threads to hang the Enterprise on one side of the rotor. And I wire it all up. I'm using my homemade high voltage 30 kilovolt DC power supply. As the last thing, I put a little weight on this side of the rotor to balance it out. Here's how it's wired. The high voltage positive output from the power supply is here. It's connected to this wire, which goes through this needle bearing, across the top of the rotor, and down to the sharp wire ends inside the front of the nacelles. The negative side goes through this ground wire, through this needle bearing, across the bottom of the rotor, and up to the rounded end of the aluminum cylinder in the back of the nacelles. Time to have some fun. I turn on the power supply and slowly turn up the voltage. With most of the lights off, you can see some purplish corona. Here it is in complete darkness. Here the Enterprise is held in place so we can look at it more closely. The nacelles have a pretty small inner diameter, so a lot of corona leaks out of the cracks, especially here where there's a hole near the sharp wire ends. Notice back here is where the aluminum foil cylinder is inside, and sure enough, that section isn't glowing. The ions are only energized in the right way to emit light between the wire ends and the closest foil end. Between those two ends is where the electric field is strongest. Also, since the diameter is so small, with such a small hole in the back, I suspect most of the ion wind that's propelling it is on the outside of the nacelle. Here I'm using an incense stick to create smoke to show airflow. One interesting effect is that the airflow over the saucer follows the saucer's downward shape. This is probably the Coanda effect taking place. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more videos like this. That includes one where I show how to make an ion wind rotor and explain how it works. Another where I show voltage and current measurements for a lifter, along with a smoke test. And one explaining how a rocket works to get from Earth to space, using SpaceX's Falcon 9 as an example. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.